Hello and welcome to this video. My name is ActiQ and today Jagex updated the giant mole and they actually made it an instance boss now, so you don't have to fight world worlds and this is very nice because everybody is testing it out right now. You can fight the giant mole either in normal mode or hard mode and in the normal mode you are supposed to be able to kill it if you have around 110 combat level and the hard mode should be okay if you are 140 plus combat level. So as a 200 level I obviously just chose the hard mode right away. The giant mole had its model completely reworked, so now it looks actually kind of scary. And the mechanics were kind of revamped, so now the giant mole doesn't really jump around that much as it did before. Also the combat has some kind of new mechanics, so the giant mole for example spawns minions and he has a couple of special attacks. But I can't tell much about the special attacks because I didn't actually know how to escape from them, but I suppose that you just run away. But yeah, if you are a high level, you can just use a lot of food and you have no problem at all to survive there. I believe at least some of the drop table was revamped. So the giant mole drops a new clingy mole, which is a mole that you can attach to an anti-dragon shield. And this is a level 55 hybrid shield, which has some damage reducing capabilities against dragon fire and the giant mole. The giant mole also drops numbing roots and the numbing root remove any damage over time effect that can be cleared by the freedom ability. So I suppose that those could be kind of useful in some PvM and PvP situations. If you are killing the giant mole in the hard mode, it can also drop ultra growth potions and those ultra growth potions will allow you to skip two phases of a tree's growth phase so it will make your trees grow a lot faster. Those potions are however untradeable. So good luck to everyone who wants to go and kill the giant mole. I found it quite tedious and I don't really find the rewards that great. So I doubt that I will be killing it that many times, but maybe I will change my mind later. In other news, Jagex made some improvements to the Falador's Shield 4. First of all, it has now the same damage reduction abilities as the anti dragon Shield Mole does but also the addition that it doesn't degrade makes the Falador Shield 4 better than the Anti-Dragon Shield Mole. Also, if you are using the Falador Shield 4 in Artisan's Workshop, you will gain plus 5% more respect. Lastly, the confirmation message for using the Shield's Prayer Restoration has been removed, and also you cannot use the Falador Shield 4 anymore to find the Giant Mole, as you have some visual cues that replace the function of the Falador shield. There was also some changes to the auras. So now there is enrichment aura, which comes in five tiers and the best tier will give you 15% additional chance to harvest enriched memories. Also Call of the Sea, Lumberjack, 5D Finger Discount, Quarry Master, Tracker and Green Fingers Aura now also have a 15% boost if you buy the new tier 5 version of those auras. Lastly there was some extra tiers to Jack of Trades, so you have tier 2 and tier 3 that require you to gain XP in 15 or 20 skills and they will also give you more XP. Also, the oddball aura has become a toggle and you can pretty much use the oddball as much as you want because it's just a graphical effect. And the final news is that the recruit a friend system was refined slightly. So now you cannot gain that much XP anymore with your recruit a friend friends. So this time you cannot exploit the recruit system as much. The bonus XP that you can gain from the recruit a friend system is now 5% and 10% if the person that you recruited is in your close proximity. There was again a big bunch of patch notes, but most of them aren't that interesting. But I will leave a link to the patch notes and I will tell you the ones that I find more interesting. So first of all, there was a glitch where you could keep your warband supplies by hopping into a free world. And this way you would just be much more easier to escape from other players. Also, apparently you could still use the War Priest 75 in free to play when you locked there from a member's world. But now your War Priest armor will turn back to level 50 when you go to free to play worlds. 
And finally, there was the ninja update patch, which is kind of nice. And I will tell the ones that I find the most interesting. So the best thing in the ninja fixes was that now you can just single click of your beast of burden and it doesn't interact, but it actually does store this time. The stats of barrel chest anchor were kind of edited. I don't actually know how much damage it does now, but that has been updated. Also, when you are collecting Phoenix Feathers, you can use the sign of Porters to teleport the Phoenix Feathers to the bank, so no more running Phoenix Feathers for Super Anti-Fire Potions. And finally, there was some changes to the collection interface that you have in the bank, so you can now see more information when you use the collect interface in your bank. But that's it pretty much about the update, so I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you like it, please leave it a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching, see you guys next time.